So we're going to spend one more day on uh, percent and percent applications here. We're going to look at five particular applications of percent that we did not look at yesterday. A couple of things we want to accomplish today. We want to basically be able to uh, solve applied problems involving these five themes, and they're all very similar. We'll do one example of each and a couple uh, that are mixed up. We want to work with problems involving percent change. We did one like that yesterday. We want to involve some uh, or work some problems involving percent difference. That's a topic that's not in your book, uh, but I think the author overlooked it because it is an important topic. We're going to do some examples. We're going to work with some problems involving percent error, which are in your text. Look at percent efficiency. and uh, a few problems involving percent concentration. We're going to use the ideas from yesterday to solve these five types of problems. Now the first one we want to look at is percent change. We looked at one similar to this yesterday. The percent change, when you hear of a percent change, in fact, this is the last example we did yesterday, it gives the uh, amount of change relative to the original value. So yesterday, the example we used was the price of gas. If the price of gas goes up 100% by the end of next week, then that means it goes up all of its current value. It's in reference to what we have right now. Now, all of the formulas that you see on the slides here are in your textbook on about uh, page 48 or 49, there's only one that's not, and I'll make sure to point that out when we get to it. Now, all the formulas that we're going to work with today have that factor of times 100% at the end. All that really means is, is that we're going to get a decimal result, and we need to convert that into a percent. Okay, So that's what the times 100% means. We usually won't write that out. We'll just uh, understand that we need to do that. Here's an example. Price of oil has been dropping lately. But suppose we've got the uh, price of a barrel of oil dropping from 78.50 to 75.25. What's the percent change? Well, with this formula, all we need to do is subtract to find out what the change was and divide it by the original price. So in this case, we're going to have our new value, which is 75.25, minus the original value of 78.50. And we're going to divide that by the original value. That's our reference, and that's 78.50. Now, what sign? is this percentage value going to have on it? Is it going to be positive or negative? It's going to be negative. Why is it going to be negative? Because the top turns out to be negative, doesn't it? Why does the top turn out to be negative? Because the new value is smaller than the original value. Well, if the new value is smaller than the original value, apparently this value decreased. And a decreasing value will always result in a negative percent change. So the sign on percent change indicates whether uh, the value increased or decreased. So when we subtract on the top there, we're going to end up with, is it negative 325? We're going to have negative 325. We're going to divide that by 7850, and we'll get our percent change. We can keep. We got four sig digs in both our original and final values. We'll keep four sig digs. This turns out to be a decimal. And if we convert it into a percent, what percentage do you end up with? Yep, negative 4.140, and that contains our four sig digs. So we had a negative 4.140% change. Went down by the negative sign, 4.140%.
Now, all your formula really is doing there, these formulas are all well and good to remember, but most of them you should be able to think through intuitively. Your percent change is just the sign of your change, or the uh, change with a sign on it, how much it went down divided by what it was. And that's your percent change. That's the intuitive formula. OK? Um, OK, well, let's look at another one. Percent error is the second type of uh, percent value that we want to look at, very closely related to percent change. Percent error uh, is an indicator of how much error a measurement contains, usually a measurement made by some measuring device, whether it be a meter uh, or a scale of some type. And the general principle is exactly the same. We just take whatever our measurement is, find out how far off that is from the true value, and divide by the true value. OK, well, incidentally, in this problem in the last one, you've still got a base, a rate, and a part, or excuse me, a base, a rate, and an amount. In this case, what is your base? What is the base assumed to be in these percent error problems? It's your true value, right. What is your amount? No. It's the change. The amount is your change, because that's some part of the true value. And then, of course, the percent is our rate. OK, well, let's take a look at an example here. Let's say we've got a scale, and it's known to have an error of negative 3.50%. We know the scale is negative 3.5% off. Now, you tell me, does that mean the scale gives a reading that's too high or too low? It's too low. It's too low by 3.5%. So we put this bracket on the scale, and it reports a mass of 423.8 grams. Well, we know the 423.8 is not correct. We know that's 3.5% too low. So the true weight of this bracket is actually more or less than 423.8 grams. It's got to be more than that. So we're just going to use our formula, plugging in these values, and we're going to solve. Here again, the order matters. You've got to keep track of your sign. If the measured value is lower than the true value, our percent error is going to be negative. If the measured value is higher than what the actual value is, then our percent error would be positive. So that sign is important. OK, well, let's fill in what we know. Now, this one's a little bit more work in that we're not just looking for the percent error. So we can't just plug things in and do the computation. We've got to do a little bit of work. What do we know? We know the percent error. We're going to convert that to a decimal. It is negative 0 0.0350. Agreed? Keeping those three sig digs won't matter for our computation, but 0 0.0350, that's negative, equals, do we know the measured value? We sure do. It's 423.8 grams. I tell you what, I'm just going to leave the units off of this uh, for keeping the problem nice and clean. We'll leave the units off. We know our answer will be in grams. 423.8 minus, no, we don't know the true value. That's the problem. So we have just a little bit of algebra to do. 423.8 minus the true value, we'll just call it t, divided by t. So we need to solve for t. This is the only type of algebra that will ever arise from these type of problems is when uh, one of the values over here, either measured or true, or um, one of the other variables and one of the other type of percent problems, turns out to be unknown. So let's solve this. We need to solve for t. What do we need to do first? Get rid of the t in the denominator. We'll do that by? Multiply both sides by t. Okay. Over here, we'll multiply by t. They cancel. And over here, we'll multiply by t. So on the left side, we now have negative 0.0350t equals 423.8 minus t. OK, we still need to solve for t. We have one more step, and then we're done. Well, two more, I guess. 
what do we need to do with our t's? Combine them, collect them together. So let's take and add t to both sides. So plus a t, plus a t. On the right side, we're left with 423.8. That's equal to negative 0 0.0350t plus t. How many t's does that leave you with? How many t's do you actually have? 0 0.90, yeah, 0 0.965. 0 0.9650t. Now what that really means, as a side note, is that our 423.8 grams is 96.5% of the true value. So our last step is to divide by t. Sorry, we're not dividing by t, we're going to divide by 0 0.9650. And as it turns out, t equals, we can keep three sig digs, right? Yeah, 3.50%, three sig digs. How many grams is it? 439 grams. And we're done. Questions about that one, or does it look OK? OK, our third uh, percent application is percent difference. This is the one that's not in your text. This formula is not given in your book. And the percent difference is a little bit different beast. Percent difference is what you use when you've got two values and neither one of them is necessarily correct, or you don't know which one is correct. You just want to know what the percent difference is between the two. Well, the problem is, is if you don't know which one of them is right, or maybe neither one of them is necessarily right, you can't use either one of those as your base. And so what you use as the base is the average of the two. Note the absolute value sign. We're going to find the difference between our two values. And whatever sign, doesn't matter which one we subtract, but the sign does not matter. Percent difference will always be a positive number. Okay? Percent difference will always be a positive number. Here's, a, here's an example. We want to know what is the percent difference between two thermometers. That measure the temperature of a room. One of them says it's 72 and a half degrees Fahrenheit, and the other one says it's 73.8 degrees Fahrenheit. You can't just you can't find the percent error here because you don't know which one is right. Well, the first thing we have to do is find the average value. Average of two numbers, of course, all you need to do is add them, divide by two. So the average of these two values is 72.5 plus 73.8 divided by two. That gives you an average value of 73.15. We'll keep the extra sig digs and cut it off when we're done. So our average is 73.15 degrees. And now we can go ahead and find the percent difference. Our percent difference is equal to the absolute value of A minus B. The order doesn't matter here. We're going to drop the sign anyway. So it's going to be 73.8 minus 72.5 divided by 73.15. Subtract those two and you get uh, 1.3 degrees divided by 
and it's going to be pretty small. 3 sig digs on that percentage, what'd you come up with? 1.78%. So there's about a 2% difference, a little bit less than a 2% difference between those two. These last two uh, are very similar in format. Percent efficiency, you know whether it's a motor or a heater or a light bulb or an engine, there's no device that's 100% efficient. That is to say the energy that goes into it does not always make it out of the device. Well, we just measure the percent efficiency as the amount of power you get out of the device compared to how much power you put in. So what's your base in, these, in this type of problem? Your reference is the input power. The amount is your output power. It's some part of the input power. OK, we've got an electric motor. It's burning up uh, 1,200 watts. And it only delivers 1.25 horsepower. How efficient is that motor? Well, it's getting 1,200 watts in. The input units and the output units are different, so we need to make them the same. It's getting 1,200 watts in and 1.25 horsepower out. Would you rather change 1.25 horsepower into watts so we know how many watts we're getting out? Or would you rather take the 1,200 watts that are going in and convert them into horsepower in? OK, let's figure out how many horsepower we're putting in. Your input is 1,200 watts. We can convert that. 746 watts for horsepower. Again, we're going to leave plenty of extra sig digs here because we're just going to cut it off at the end. That's our shortcut. So it turns out those 1,200 watts are the equivalent of putting about 1.60. 8.5 horsepower, oh, better call that 8.6, 8.6 horsepower into the engine. Then we can use our formula, our percent efficiency. Is our output value, how much are we getting out? I forgot. 1.25. Compared to the 1.6086 that we put in. And what percentage survives? 77.7, how many sig digs are we actually limited to? Two, 78%. The other 22% for this electric motor? Heat. Wasted is heat. OK, one more application here. Percent concentration. Percent concentration refers to mixtures of various kinds. And the percent concentration of any one component can be given as a percentage uh, compared to the total amount of the whole mixture. Great example, this is chocolate milk. Get that delicious Hershey's syrup because it's superior to the powder. Stir that in there, only a small percentage of your uh, drink is actually chocolate syrup. Most of it is a mixture, most of it is milk, and they combine to make some mixture. OK, well, let's look at an example of this case. We've got uh, eight gallons of unleaded gas. We're talking about typical. Uh, 87 octane, you'd get a quick trip. It's 10% ethanol, typically. We're going to mix 8 gallons of that with 6 gallons of E85. E85 is 85% ethanol and 15% unleaded gasoline. And we want to know what the percent mixture or what the percent concentration is of the mixture. 
Well, this one's actually got a few steps in it. This one isn't quite as uh, clean cut as the other one. Oh, could be. This particular problem isn't. What's the first thing we need to do here? We ultimately want to find what the percent concentration of ethanol is in the mixture. So what do we need to know to do that? We got to know the total amount. Do we know the total amount? How many? We're going to have a total of 14 gallons. We know the total amount. Do we know the amount of ethanol that's going in there? Well, we can figure it out. Take your eight gallons. Of the eight gallons of the original, is it all ethanol? Is it all gas? No. It's what percentage ethanol? So what's 10% of that 8 gallons? 0.8 gallons. Okay. So from the first part, we have 10% 0.10 times 8 gallons. Don't you agree? That's the amount of ethanol from our first part uh, of the mixture that we're adding. Plus, that's not the only place we're getting ethanol. Where else are we getting ethanol? E85. How much ethanol will there be in six gallons of E85? Zero point eight five, eighty five percent of six gallons. And so that means that we've got zero point eight gallons from the first part plus 0.85 times 6 gallons, how many gallons does that work out to? 5.1? 5.1 gallons of ethanol here. That makes sense because of that 6 gallons, it's mostly ethanol, 85%. And so how many total gallons of ethanol have we got? 5.9 gallons. Now we can answer the question. Our percent concentration. The amount of ethanol divided by the total amount of fuel that we now have. 5.9 gallons, the ethanol is your amount. 14 gallons is your base. And that turns out to be 40 something? 42%, two sig digs, yep. Forty-two percent. Twelve dollars bag of candy, uh, licorice specifically. Last week. A little bag of strawberry licorice. Notice this. It was a twelve ounce bag and on the on the bag it said now 25% more. And we want to know, well I wanted to know and now because of that you want to know, what was the original size? It's important to know with all these problems that you do not have to use these formulas to solve these problems. If you've got a good intuitive sense of these percentages and you see, oh well I know what I need to do to solve that, solve it. You don't have to use these formulas. These are just a way to guide you through some common scenarios. Yeah, can be. Well, one approach would be to say, well, I now have 125% of what I started with, all of what the original bag was plus the 25% more. You could solve it that way. But let's use uh, formulas we've been using for the other ones. This is what kind of or what category of uh, percent here. Percent change, that's right. So our percent change is 25%. Our percent change is, how do you find the percent change? The new value minus the original value. So our new value is 12 ounces 
minus the original value. Hate to use O for uh, a variable for obvious reasons. Let's use V. That's our original value divided by the original value. So let's solve it. Well, this is the same scenario you came across before. Solve this real quickly. To multiply both sides by V, they cancel on the right. On the left side, we have 0.25V. That's equal to 12 minus V. Now what? Add V to both sides. And you get 1.25V is equal to 12. Finally, divide by 1.25. And it turns out our original value was 9.6 ounces. That was the original value. And we got it solved. Look OK? Now, just as a real quick note, if you don't like that method, Another approach that you certainly could take to that is to simply write this statement. You have to think outside of 0 to 100 percent, though. Our new bag is 125 percent of what the original one was, right? Because we got all of what the original bag was plus this 25 percent more. So we could say 125 percent of the original value is. 9.6. Oh, sorry, not 9.6. 12. Dang it, that's what you get when you know the answer before you work a problem. 125% of the original value is 12. And now you can just solve that like we did it yesterday. What's your base here? V is your base, 12 is your amount. And so we can say 12 equals 125%, 1.25 V. And then you get right back to the last step we solved here. V is 9.6. That's true with all these equations. You can write some sort of a percent statement like that and solve it directly. We have a 5% bleach in water solution. And that accounts for a quarter cup of bleach. The question is, how much water is there in that solution? We know the percent concentration is the amount of bleach compared to the total amount of solution. The amount of solution is your base. The amount of bleach is your amount. So fill in what we know. Our percent concentration, 5.0. Got to make it a decimal, so that's 0 0.050 equals, do we know the amount of our bleach? Quarter cup, 0 0.25 cups divided by the amount of the total solution. No, let's call that our um, S for solution. OK, well, we can solve this. Multiply both sides by S. And we get 0.050s equals 0 0.25 cups. Solve it. Divide both sides by 0 How much of the total solution do we have? Five cups. That's the total amount of solution. Now, did we answer the question? No. Stop there. Nice job. Minus one. Because what does it ask? How many cups of water are there? How much is there in the total solution? Five cups. It's not all water, though. 
minus a quarter cup of bleach. The amount of water we have is equal to 5.0 cups minus 0 0.25 or a quarter cup, and we end up with 4.75 cups of water.